Hello. It, it's some time since I addressed the university community. In fact, the last time was in April. And I wanted just to bring you up to speed with some of the things that have been happening in the university, and particularly for the students, because when we invite you back onto our campuses, the university will be in a different place. It'll be doing different things, and it may appear slightly differently to you. Over the last few months, many things have been happening in the university. In fact, here I'm looking at one of the PhD theses, one of the many successes for people within the university. Several members of staff have achieved their doctoral degrees during the last few months. But I want to focus today just on the shift from teaching in the university to learning. Because the university, I think, for, for a long time has been a place where people come to be taught rather than people come to learn. And I want our undergraduate students to make that shift between from teaching to learning. One of the other things we've been doing apart from the research is that we've been developing our learning platform, our e-learning platform, and uploading materials and resources onto that platform. And some students have managed to access the platform, others have managed to enroll. And those of you who have been onto the platform will see that the materials that are there are pretty static. And I want to talk to you about how you can make best use of that material. But first of all, let me touch just on the motivation for learning. The motivation for learning falls into two discrete categories of motivation. There's internal motivation, that's what drives me to be the best, and there's external motivation. And a lot of people in learning institutions are motivated externally. They're motivated first and foremost by the desire to do well in their exams. They're motivated by assessment. And that's what drives a lot of young learners in our institutions to say, just tell me what's in the exam and then I can revise that and I can submit myself to the examination system. And I want you to go beyond that because up until now it's true that assessment has driven learning in the university. But I want you to be driven by, by internally, by the desire to want to be better and to want to learn. And the reason for that is it causes you to go beyond just learning the materials in order to pass the exam. And I want you to get used to reading beyond your subject, beyond the material that's presented in the classrooms. And one of the instruments that you can use is what we call the graduate attributes. And these are attributes that we want to see in our learners as they develop their, during their time at university, but also at the point of graduation. We want you to have a set of skills that sometimes people call soft skills, but we call core skills that will help you in your future career and help you when it comes to employment, but also help you to contextualize the material that you've learned at university, but also to make sense of the world that you progress into. So I want you to think very clearly about what motivates you at university, what motivates you to do well in exams. For some students it might be the fear of failure, for other students it might be the desire to be the best in the class. But you have to find the motivation internally. Some of you will be motivated by parents and family and friends who keep urging you on, who keep supporting you. You may want to make somebody proud, but you must find that motivation to learn and that desire to do well from inside. Now when we make a shift from teaching in the university to learning, it becomes your shared responsibility with us to learn as much as you can within the framework that we provide. Now the information that is there available for you in the World Wide Web is huge. It's like being cast adrift in a large sea or cast adrift in Lake Kivu, not knowing where you're going or why you're there, needing a compass, needing a guide. And so what we do through the learning platform is provide links to resources, as well as PowerPoint slides, as well as handouts, that provide a bit of a guide for you 
and help you to contain the totality of the information that you need to know at this particular point in time. Though I hope that many of you will, be, will go beyond the material presented and discover and explore and find out other things. And so we have a shared responsibility to address the intended learning outcomes. And the intended learning outcomes for any course or any module that you do are a, are a detailed description of the things that you're expected to know by the end of a particular period of study or module. And as a teacher, I, I often can't teach you everything you need to know in order to achieve every intended learning outcome. But I want to establish a covenant with you that you will go in pursuit of some of the knowledge that you need to address some of the intended learning outcomes and I will guide you on the way. But you'll hear different methodologies and terminologies as you come back into the university. You'll hear us talk variously about blended learning, about flipped classrooms. And I want to explain some of those things to you. Because up until now, many students in universities have used the information that's imparted in a classroom by writing down everything that is imparted by the lecturer or shown on a PowerPoint slide. Or they will use anything that is presented in a document from which to learn, or they'll, they'll use chapters in textbooks. And they, therefore, they become quite passive as learners. And we want you to become much more active as learners. So the thinking behind flipped classrooms is that rather than presenting information and then perhaps leaving some time at the end for questions, before I meet you next time in the classroom, I will ask you to look at the information that's online, to read a document, to look at a case study, to look at a set of PowerPoint slides, so that when we meet next time, I can start the class by asking you questions based on that information, perhaps asking if there's anything you don't understand or anything you want clarification on. And that's what we call flipped classrooms. So we're actually flipping the dynamic in the classroom. I ask you questions at the beginning. You tell me things you don't understand or things that you want clarification on. And I modify what I tell you in the class and how I instruct you based on that feedback and information at the beginning. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's as difficult for teachers as it is for learners to make that transition. I want to also talk about the term we use, blended learning. Again, it's nothing to be afraid of. But blended learning is that you as learners will learn from different forms of information. Some will be information in a classroom or in a laboratory. Other sources of information will be online materials. And that's what we mean by blended learning. The learning sources come from different modalities and different media. But blended learning is not something that we do to you as an institution. Blended learning is something you do for yourself as a learner. Because I want you to go in pursuit of knowledge. I want you to look at a range of information sources in order to develop yourselves and in order to do well in your exams. We also use terminology such as PBL, which means problem-based learning, or CDE, that means challenge-driven education. We also talk about using case studies. And again, it's nothing to be afraid of. And let me tell you the purpose and value of using problem-based learning or challenge-driven education or case studies. What a case study is, or a problem, that we sometimes write as a narrative, as a short story, to prompt your learning is sometimes a description of an event. Sometimes it's a descriptive analysis of a situation, whether you're studying monetary economics or you're studying medicine. But within that case study, within that story, there are what we call cues or prompts, things that triggers 
that we hope that you'll pick up on as you read the story and say, you know, I don't know very much about that or I need to find out more about something else before I can understand that. And that's how we drive your learning through using case studies, problem-based learning. We, we, we generate problems as short stories and narratives. And so the purpose of today's encounter is just simply to outline some of the changes that you will see. But the key thing for you is that when you come back to the campuses, your academic calendar will look different. And that's because as we move from being passive learners to active learners, as we move from an institution that teaches to an institution that nurtures and encourages learners, we won't be replacing every hour of face-to-face -face teaching that you might have expected in the calendar that we had before the COVID-19 pandemic. We won't be replacing every hour of face-to-face -face instruction with an equivalent hour of face-to-face -face instruction but will be modifying the amount of time you spend in conversation, in discussion with your lecturers and your professors, sometimes being challenged by them and sometimes challenging them. But we will expect you to spend many more hours in self-directed learning, learning in small peer groups and learning in pairs and learning individually. And so these are just some of the changes and I hope you look forward to joining the university and rejoining the university with as much excitement as we have as we consider welcoming you back. Um, I hope that you watch out for a series of other encounters and videos from me where we can help to prepare you for uh, recommencing your academic journey. Thank you.